John Cullen with OKRod.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm giving you guys a jackfruit masterclass. Everything I know about picking out and eating, preserving, and even storing a jackfruit you would buy from the grocery store. So I do want to disclaim that I'm an expert in picking out jackfruit that you buy from the store. Most of the jackfruit you buy in the store in the United States is being imported from Mexico at this time unless you're lucky enough to live near Florida in which case you may be getting jackfruit from Florida but then it's gonna cost significantly more money this jackfruit was sourced from a local Hispanic market um, it was on sale for 50 cents a pound uh, they are mostly available at Asian markets and also some better Hispanic markets uh, normally in my area they sell from I've seen it for as cheap as 33 cents a pound on sale rare instances um, All the way up to usually about a dollar fifty a pound if you are not an expert on picking them out And I will be sharing with you guys my tips I will say that it's always best to buy it pre-cut many Hispanic and Asian markets may sell it pre-cut They'll wrap it in plastic and then that's that's the best way to buy it if you're not confident in your jackfruit picking abilities because trust me, when you're buying, this this fruit happens to be a 39 pounder, 40 pounds right here. When you're buying a big large fruit and it's costing you a buck 50 a pound, you're spending like 50 bucks or more on a fruit and then you get it home and it's not good. I guess you could always turn it into like jackfruit pulled pork or a vegan meat substitute by flavoring it up and cooking it. That being said, that is not the way I like to eat my jackfruit. I like to eat it fresh, although I will. Uh, steam the seeds so they are actually edible. So if you guys go to pick these out and they're pre-cut Then you just want to pick the jackfruit up and smell it if it smells really fragrant and floral and smells like juicy fruit gum Yes, that's right Jackfruit is the flavor of juicy fruit gum not the other way around It's amazing that you could literally eat a fruit that tastes like candy that is delicious for you nutritious and even can help prevent and reverse disease that being said for the best deal you're always gonna want to buy the whole large jackfruit and I as I said this one is a 39 pounder it's huge look at this I mean the circumference is like crazy this thing is giant it's bigger than my head and trust me guys I got a fairly big head <laughs> nonetheless uh, some of the things you want to look for when you pick out a jackfruit number one most important criteria is you want to smell it if you smell it and it smells like bubblegum, that's a very good indicator that it's ripe and it's going to be really good. Probably the next indicator I use when I'm picking them out at the display, I basically press on every single jackfruit. And I want one that gives the general pressure, not just at the bottom, but also at the top. Very important. You want it evenly ripe at the bottom and the top and even just in random places. So like this jackfruit, is pretty much soft wherever I touch it. It kind of like gives the general pressure, much like an avocado. Now the other thing I look for is you guys want to look for this, right? On the jackfruit, it's bumpy. No, this is not a durian. Durian have little points. And you know, when this is not ripe, it's a little bit more pointy. So let's see. Over on this side of the jackfruit, you guys can see it's more pointy. So I'll explain that. So pointy, it means it's like more pointed, like each little bump. Is like a little point and I mean maybe you could get some kind of like um, reflexology if you run your hands on this <laughs> but here's the thing as the fruit ripens up on the tree and stays on the tree longer when they're young it's more pointy and as the fruit ripens up uh, the fruit kind of stretches out and then the little bumps flatten so if you guys look at the bottom of this our fruit over on this side you guys can see those bumps like literally flattened out a lot so that's also a very good sign, especially like right here. This is a really good indicator that it's uh, ripe. Another indicator can be that it is also, uh, you know, more yellowish in color, right? On one side, this is like kind of greenish. Part of it's kind of turning brown because I bought it a couple days ago and I haven't put it in the fridge yet because it's too big to fit in my fridge and I don't have room. Um, but you want it to be more yellowish than uh, green if it's like really dark green that's an indicator that it's not ripe along with the other indicators other thing I want to let you guys know is on the top of this where it's cut on the stem there's this blue stuff they paint that on it is a fungicide 
So one of the things I always like to do is cut this area off and not get my knife touching the blue stuff. This basically will prevent the stem rot from occurring and if the stem starts rotting due to a fungus, it'll actually kind of uh, permeate into the jackfruit and then start making the jackfruit all soft and kind of go bad actually. So, and then sometimes they're not precise on getting that stuff on so it gets uh, spread to the fruit. That's another good thing to check when you're buying it is I always do a stem test. So I take my finger, push on the stem. If the stem's solid and not moving, that is a good indicator. But if the stem starts moving, that's an indicator that this could have stem rot that could have then seeped inside the core of the jackfruit to cause it go uh, bad uh, sooner rather than later. All right. Now, this is the amazing thing, guys. Like, I can't eat this whole fruit in one sitting. Maybe some of you guys could. I highly doubt that unless you've been fasting for a while. And then even if you've been fasting for a while, you should just eat a ton of jackfruit at once. Nonetheless, what I will say is that this is a great storage fruit. It can store really well provided you eat it at an appropriate time. Like if, if it's starting to get soft and have rotten spots, it's not going to store as well. This is in really nice shape here. It's really soft. There's no rotten spots on it yet, so now is the time I really need to get it in the fridge. So what I like to do is I like to cut up a section as much as I'm going to eat at in that day or use at that time period, right? Very important. The rest, you're going to basically keep whole and keep the fruit uh, inside the whole structure of the fruit. And then you're just going to basically put it back in your fridge. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate for you guys how I like to store it. So in this case, maybe I'm going to cut off about this much today, and I'm going to use this for the demo video, eat some. I'm going to show you how to store it uh, frozen, uh, best way to dry it, as well as store the pods fresh. It's best to store the whole fruit and not take out the pods unless you need the pods separated because it's easy. It's an easy to go food and, you know, cutting it up like this is a process. But that's one of the things I love about jackfruit. You know, I have some friends over. We cut it up and we all just, you know, take our time talking and, and taking pods out and eating it and, uh, you know, saving the seeds for me to uh, process in the instant pot. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and cut a section of this off and show you guys what it looks like. So I like to use ceramic knives. Link down below to my Amazon shop if you guys want to get the ceramic knives. The large knife I'm using is the large chef's knife to cut this in half, but then I like a finer detail knife that's more narrow. And that is a lot sharper than this big, large chef's knife that I'm just using to do the initial cut in half. All right, so look at that. All right, so next you're going to see it is starting to bleed this kind of like latex sap. That's completely normal. The other thing is that I could completely smell it. And I wish you were there where the camera is because even at several feet away, if you walk into this room right now, you would just smell... Just smells like bubble gum candy. It's, it's completely insane, completely delicious. But yeah, nonetheless, it has this uh, white sap. And how I found you can get rid of the sap or not have it be a problem when you cut it open is if you buy the jackfruit and then you stick it in your fridge, right? I like to refrigerate my jackfruit in my fridge that is around 40 degrees, not too warm and not too cold, could get uh, cold damage. And then it seems that if I store it in the fridge before I cut it open, I won't get all the yellow sap. If you do get the yellow sap on your knives, on your fingers, it is really sticky. But you could easily just put some coconut oil, rub that into your knife and in, on your hands, and, and then wash it off with soap and water, and then you'll be able to get rid of it. So the part inside the jackfruit, you got a few areas. You got the seed. You guys can see some of the seeds basically just got cut in half. All these seeds uh, can be eaten. Um, you know, you can make jackfruit flour out of the seeds. Traditionally, they are cooked by boiling in salt. I don't use salt, and I don't like the boiling technique for cooking things. So I will basically just put these in the instant pot for 30 minutes and steam it. Um, and they get soft, and I could eat them much like beans. And actually, they're kind of more related to beans than a nut, actually. Their nutrient profile really good in protein as well as some of the minerals. The other area inside here is the main core of the jackfruit. It's like the pineapple core. Unlike the pineapple core that is edible, um, while you could eat the jackfruit core, it's just nothing but fiber. There's no flavor, no taste to it. Um, so that's going to be removed. I'll show you guys how we're going to do that. And then you have the jackfruit rag. The jackfruit rag are the little white pieces 
that are between the fruit pieces. Sometimes you get jackfruit with a lot of rag, and sometimes you get jackfruit with little rag. Luckily, this jackfruit has very little rag, so that means there's a lot more fruit to process and to eat. As far as I'm aware, there's no way to tell if a jackfruit's gonna have more rag or less. I would kind of assume that if the fruit is larger and more ripe, it shows signs of ripening, then maybe the rag will be less than more because also some of the rag in some cases are starting to turn into the uh, you know undeveloped or ripe fruits when I buy it, all right? So the next thing I wanna show you is how to store it. So once we have it cut in half, I'm gonna basically just store this whole piece in my fridge and I'll show you guys how I do that without using any plastic. All right, how I do that is by using this non-stick genuine vegetable parchment paper made in France. I happen to buy it at Sam's Club. This is a member's mark brand. I believe Costco also sells it. I prefer to wrap my food in paper instead of plastic whenever possible. Um, in addition, when I'm done using the parchment paper, it gets shredded up and then put into my compost pile to be more sustainable on the planet. So all I'm gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and take out a section of this and just, and then rip it off. And then I basically put this over the jackfruit, as you guys can see. I also save my watermelon as well as other melons and even mamesa potes like this. I'll cut it in half and then I'll store the other half for later if I don't wanna eat all of it. I'll then take a nice heavy duty rubber band. I actually think this rubber band came wrapped on some uh, asparagus when I bought it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap the rubber band around the jackfruit. And this holds the plastic on. Then I will put this in my fridge, uh, make sure the paper does not rip. Generally I store it in my fridge kind of like face down on a glass shelf so that like nothing could permeate underneath there. And then, you know, if I store it in this way, you know, it'll easily store a week. And you know, during that week, I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna take out and cut off a slice, eat this much. When I have a friend over, we'll share it with a friend and I'll put the rest back in the fridge until the point where I'm like, hey, I need to use the rest and I have some time. Then I'll basically take it out, eat it. And then at the same time I'm eating it, I'll also pot it to be able to store it uh, to, in to go or to store it already potted or to freeze it or even dry it as you're gonna learn in a minute. So first thing, I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the fridge and we'll be right back at you to show you guys how we're gonna cut this baby up. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how I like to cut the jackfruit up. Now I know some of you guys might've seen these one minute Instagram reels or whatever where they just basically go into the jackfruit from the outside and just grab it and rip it open and then it all comes apart and looks really cool, right? <laughs> So if you find a ripe jackfruit on the tree and it is really ripe, yes, it can absolutely do that. But I will tell you guys, no jackfruit that is imported from Mexico that you buy in the store is ever going to do that. So you're going to need to have these skills that I'm going to show you guys right now. I've experimented many different ways cutting jackfruit, and you may have your own way. This is the way that I found to be most effective to get the most fruit and get it out the easiest. So what I like to do is I basically, uh, once I got a little piece off, I'll cut it in half. So now I'm using the Carasera micro serrated ceramic knife, um, linked down below in my Amazon shop, as I said. I would recommend getting the kit with the three knives. It has a micro serrated ceramic uh, tomato knife like this, that large chef's knife you saw, and a smaller fruit knife. That is the best deal. That's the best knife for cutting jackfruit. That being said, if you do run into a seed, these ceramic knives can run through the seed. Just make sure you cut straight through and don't get stuck in a seed and then bend or twist your knife. They will break, all right? Anyways, let's go ahead and put this in there and we're just gonna go ahead and saw this back and forth and cut this right in half. All right, check it out what we got. Whoa, we got a jackfruit cut in half now. <laughs> all right, so the next step, once we have these two halves, that's where I get in, into it so you guys can see uh, we got this core piece so the goal is to get this core piece out and if you're super handy with knives you could kind of carve around this way but the easiest way i found to do that is we're just going to go ahead and cut through this core like right in the middle of it so it's like a half circle we're going to cut each of the half circles into two parts and then i basically stick my finger in there once i cut through the half circle and then i just spread it uh and then i make two half circles and I basically once again take the knife and then cut in the middle of this half circle or half of a half a circle <laughs> to
to make uh, eighth of a circle. <laughs> and I'll do the same on this side. And then spread it in half. You guys see what I'm doing? Then I'll do that one more time. Be very careful when you are doing this. And I do encourage you guys to have sharp knives. I've been to some of my friends' houses that have dull knives and they're raw vegans. And I'm like, how do you guys even live? Like, I got to have sharp knives. And that's why I like the ceramic knives. Because even if you're not the knife guru with your sharpener and the best knives and you sharpen them, then hey, those knives are probably better than the ceramic. But for those of the guys and girls that are just normal people that don't sharpen knives and your knives are dull it frustrates you and you could cause accidents with them that's why i like these guys because it's just basically the maintenance free knife <laughs> until you do something dumb and they break on you then you gotta buy more all right so you guys can see i basically cut this and now it's into one two three four five six seven eight sections and then all i do now is because now it's more narrow i could then come in and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my knife between here and here and just follow the line between here and here and curve it so that I'm basically just cutting out the core and not and saving all the fruit underneath it. So let me see. I'll go ahead and do that. Let's see if I can turn it this direction for you so you guys can at least see me starting it. I'll start here and then I'm going to look at my knife and guide it right under the white part right above the yellow and just kind of curve it as I go up. And that, that looks to be a pretty good job. So the goal is to get as the least amount of yellow on, on this part as possible, but you want to get enough because if you leave any of this core, it's going to stick, the, the pieces are going to be stuck down and not separate easily. All my jackfruit uh, does get composted. So we're just going to go ahead and do that to the rest of these sections. All right, so I was pretty good at cutting all that off so you guys can see what it looks like now. It looks like we just cut off that whole section, and when you guys do that now, you can basically just flip this open, and it looks really cool because now every little pod is separate, and you could pull it out really easily without using another knife. So, for example, we could just come to this pod. If you guys do want to use it, you could probably usually just pull this out, and it separates easily. Then what I do is I take a knife, or you don't even need to use a knife at this point, I just do one slice, and you could slice it in half. And then you guys can see there's a little seed inside, and then I basically pull this seed out. Now attach the seed, there's what, what I would call a testa on the seed. So this is the seed, around the seed is this little part right here. This part is edible, it'll improve your microbiome. There are published studies on that. It's just chewy, doesn't really taste like nothing. <laughs> it is edible so you don't have to throw that out i like to usually just take it off the seed sometimes i compost it sometimes i eat it and of course this is what you want the jackfruit pieces itself a little latexy today we're gonna go ahead and try this on the camera for you guys wow honestly this is one of the best jackfruits i've had in a while think for a few reasons. Number one, I usually never buy them at 39 pounds. They're usually always smaller. So this one's like way ripe. Really tastes like bubble gum. Nice and chewy, watery, rich in vitamin A, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, other minerals, protein, vitamins, carotenoids. So delicious, and it tastes like you're eating juicy fruit gum. All right, so while jackfruit does taste amazing, right, it's also super healthy for you. I really want to encourage you guys to eat more fruit, right? I want you guys to get rid of the candies, the cookies, the chocolate bars, all these stupid junk food, ultra-processed foods that will degrade your health, right, and start improving your health by eating more fresh fruit instead of all those junk foods and processed foods. And if you're already eating a lot of fruit, I want you guys to diversify your fruit, right? A lot of you guys just eat apples and oranges and bananas, pineapple and the common fruits. But I really want you guys to expand your palate. I mean, some, the jackfruit tastes amazing. It's one of my favorite fruits in the entire world. Plus, it is very nutritious. So we're going to go ahead and pop up a study right here. And the study is titled, A Review on Tropical Fruit jackfruit and it says jackfruit a tropical fruit of the family Maracinae genus artocarpus is usually 
preferred due to its subtle sweet taste and fruit flavor. However, this fruit has an impressive nutrient profile, which is comparable to shredded meat by vegans and vegetarians. It contains a lot of fiber, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, low fat, and protein. More than three grams per cup, making jackfruit unique from other fruits. Jackfruit also keeps for various medicinally important compounds, mainly antioxidants, carotenoids, flavones, and vitamin C. As a result, its consumption has positive impact on human health. Various health benefits have been reported with jackfruit intake, such as immune health, preventing skin problems, cardiovascular disease prevention, blood sugar control, anti-aging, anti-cancer, anti-ulcer, antiviral, and anti-inflammatory. The present study attempted to review the morphology, production, consumption, nutritional value, and health-promoting benefits of jackfruit. So yes, jackfruit is a nutrition nutritious fruit we're going to go ahead and pop up a picture for you guys and you guys can see the jackfruit has many potential health benefits antibacterial anti-diabetic uh, anti-aging anti-hypertensive anti-cancer anti-inflammatory and a whole lot more so i really want you guys to get this fruit in you guys and hopefully you will be able to find it fresh like me and eat it fresh because I believe that is the best way to eat it as nature intended. That being said, because it is a fresh fruit, it's gonna, it can spoil like any fresh fruit can. So what we're, we're going to get into next is we're going to show you guys how you guys per, can preserve it for a few weeks in the fridge or up to a year or more in your freezer or even up to 25 years on your shelf right now. So let's get started. All right, so now I wanna show you guys a more convenient way to store your jackfruit instead of storing just the half you're not gonna eat, but to be able to make it easy, grab and go food for you guys. So, you know, it's not too convenient to carry the whole jackfruit like this, although I have taken it to potlucks and whatnot when I basically, and I'll carve it at the potluck and remove the core and whatnot, then it'll open up like this. But if you want it even more convenient and easy, because you don't want to take something that looks like this to your job and have everybody question you, I'm going to show you guys how you guys can store it in a mason jar in your fridge for up to a week without issue. So basically what you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and uh, you're going to take out the seeds out of the jackfruit. And I always like to save the seeds separate. Um, formerly, I used to put them in the compost, but the seeds are a very uh, important source of nutrition and if they're heated, they're, you know, they have a lot of fiber in there. They're really good for you guys to eat. That's why I like to steam them. But you're basically going to take out the fruit itself with the seed out. And you're going to take it and you're just going to basically drop it into a mason jar. So I'm going to go ahead and pot a bunch of this fruit and get it into the mason jar. And we're going to come back at you when I got uh, actually two full mason jars. So I, so I could show you guys my two different storage techniques. All right, so as you guys can see, I potted out. Yeah, like I like potting out jackfruit. <laughs> Usually when I'm eating it, and I was eating some as I went. Um, the jackfruit, and I wanted to show you guys what this looks like. So, you know, this area still has a few pods left, but this is the rag. This is the part that kind of hold the pods, like in between the pods that kind of hold it together. Uh, they can also actually turn into the pods as the fruit matures. Uh, that being said, they are edible, but they taste like nothing. So if you really want to get maximum food value, you could eat these edible chewy parts that taste like nothing. <laughs> uh, that being said, I had a visitor while I was potting out my jackfruit because he smelt it. So let's throw up the video of Oakley visiting me, who also loves jackfruit. We have somebody else that loves jackfruit right here. His name is the Oakley Man. <laughs> All right, hold on, little guy. This is how much he loves the jackfruit. Look at this. He just eats it right up. <laughs> he loves this stuff. Just make sure you remove all the seeds. All right, so now I'm going to show you guys how to store the jackfruit two different ways. We have two mason jars, both filled with the jackfruit. Very important to follow my directions specifically for the best storage. Okay, so the first jar, we just have the jackfruit potted out in the jar. The next thing we'll do, we will take a vacuum seal lid. I like the lid with the little valves in it. We're going to hold that down and we're going to use a vacuum pump. This happens to be the pure juicer vacuum pump. It may not be available at the time this video is posting. 
Um, that being said, the link down below to my Amazon shop where you guys can get these lids and a plastic pump. Anyways, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and suck the oxygen out of the glass. And it takes approximately 10 pumps that I could like literally do with one finger. I'm about a pinky. Because <laughs> this pump is really well designed so that it doesn't take much strength at all. Not like some of the cheap plastic pumps I've bought in the past. And if you guys look closely, the jackfruit may expand a little bit, but basically we're removing the excess oxygen out of the carafe. This is very important. If there's too much oxygen inside the jar, then it'll cause bacterial to grow faster. In addition, because there's no oxygen in there, it's gonna help preserve the fruit so that fruit, fruit the fruit won't oxidize as quickly. After we got the fruit seal in a jar like this under vacuum with about 26 inches of mercury or about 80% of the oxygen removed, it goes into my fridge that is set between 33 and 35 degrees. Because we have the fruit out of the whole fruit package, I wanna keep it as cold as possible, close to freezing, but not freezing, so it stores as long as possible. Depending on the quality of the fruit you get, like if the fruit is more dry and not wet, um, you know, because there's like a crunchy kind jackfruit, there's also kind of the chewy kind. This tends to be more of the chewy kind, so it's a little bit more wet on there. Um, but if it's dry, it can store for up to seven days under vacuum in your cold fridge. I am confident that you'll eat it by that time. I really like it in this format because now I can just go to my fridge, open it up, grab the jar, open the lid, dump it out, eat it. I could take this, you know, jar to go with me while I'm in the car and snack on it in the car. You know, so now you have a jackfruit, which is a fast food, <laughs> which it, otherwise you have jackfruit, which is a slow food. And honestly, it's probably better to eat your food slow. That being said, this is one way to store the jackfruit for up to a week. If you guys want to increase that uh, double the amount of time, then you're going to want to do this technique. You're thinking, John, that's a jackfruit in another jar. Yeah, you're right. That's a jackfruit in another jar. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and fill the jar up and cover the jackfruit completely and submerge it literally in water. This is very important. If you submerge it in water and then you put the vacuum lid on and then you pull the vacuum on it, you guys can see there's air bubbles rising out of the water as well as a jackfruit. Now we pulled all the oxygen out of the head space as well as underneath. You guys can see maybe even some bubbles coming up. It's trying to pull the excess air out of the jackfruit. That happens whether you have water or not. That being said, I found when you store it in water, it'll store for longer and not go bad as quickly than when you store it dry without the water. That being said, you are now diluting your jackfruit. It's going to be more watery when you eat it. That being said, the other thing I, guys, I want you guys to do, if you guys do store it like this, eat all your jackfruit separately or then drink the water. Because after the jackfruit's been soaking in this water like this for just a day or two, the water is going to be like jackfruit infused water. It's going to be so delicious. And if you guys want to use your jackfruit in smoothies, hey, this way of storage might be preferable because now you can just basically dump this in your, uh, hopefully, vacuum blender to blend up the water and the jackfruit into a delicious treat. So storing it in this way will double the length of time storing it this way based on my testing. So I would say up to 14 days, but of course it also depends on the quality of the jackfruit you're buying. So you guys just learn how to make jackfruit more easy and convenient and a to-go food when you're on the run. So storing the jackfruit in this way will get you a week up to two weeks now we're gonna show you guys how you guys can store jackfruit for up to a year. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to store jackfruit in your freezer, not your fridge, for long-term storage. A year, maybe even a little bit longer than that, uh, provided you have a fridge that stays cold and doesn't have a defrost cycle that could ruin your frozen uh, produce or other frozen foods, so get like a deep freezer, right? Very important. Now to do that, we're once again going to go ahead and take the pods out of the jackfruit. So let me go ahead and I'll start and I'll do one and I'll show you guys this. And once again, I'm just taking out the seed. And we're just going to go ahead and put the seeds in the little container. And once again, all the seeds I steam uh, for about 30 minutes in the instant pot. You could also boil them 
And then to me, they taste like the chestnuts, you know, like you get chestnuts roasting on a roasted fire. I guess I suppose you could also roast these. I prefer to steam them so it creates the least amount of carcinogens and retains the most amount of nutrients in the jackfruit seeds. Also very full of antioxidants. Anyways, we get the fruit that we took the seed out of and we basically put it in these special Ziploc bags that have a one-way valve. The good one-way valves are like this that have a solid piece of plastic with a little valve. The cheap ones are just have a little piece of tape, which I find tend to fail rather quickly. So we're just going to go ahead and take the rest of the jackfruit pieces out of this and put it in the bag. All right, so you guys can see we got all the jackfruit in that zipper seal bag with the valve. Now we're just going to go ahead and zipper up and seal the bag. All right, once we got the bag all sealed, it's very important. I want to single layer all the jackfruit. That's optimal. That way you're going to get the most oxygen removal. This is something that every other video on YouTube I've seen people storing jackfruit for up to a year in your fridge. They don't remove the air. The air is very important to remove and to vacuum seal is critical for all my storage techniques, including in the fridge, dry in the fridge, soaked in water, or just freezing. Also, of course, vacuum sealing will prevent the freezer burn if you have a good vacuum. So once we have the zipper sealed, we're just gonna go ahead and once again put a pump on it, and we're just gonna go ahead and pump out the air out of the one-way valve. All right, as you guys can see, we pumped all the air out, and this is what it looks like. It's completely flattened out, oxygen removed. Now we're just gonna go ahead and put this in my freezer. I like to keep my freezer out at around 30 degrees, 26 to 30 degrees, definitely below the freezing. And now this will store easily for up to a year. Uh, should you open it up, take out the fruit you need to say make a blended smoothies or I like to actually put it through a juicer to make a sorbet out of the jackfruit, you're then gonna wanna seal it back up and then pull all the oxygen out of it as quickly as possible and then put it back in your freezer. You could easily store this for a year or even more doing it this way. You're still gonna have the amazing jackfruit flavor. And jackfruit, unlike bananas, bananas tend to turn pretty brown when you defrost them. Uh, jackfruit tends to keep its uh, you know shape pretty well. It does get a little bit more slimy and soft, but it does retain the amazing flavor once defrosted. That being said, uh, the way I usually use these is I just open the bag up and I just add it to my berry smoothie. Sometimes with papaya juice, jackfruit, as well as other berries. All right, so now you guys learned how I store it in the fridge, store it in the freezer. Now we're gonna go ahead and share with you guys that nobody else has told you before how you guys could store the jackfruit for up to 25 years on a shelf. So the secret to storing jackfruit on a shelf for up to 25 years is not a dehydrator. <laughs> you know, while people do dehydrate jackfruit, uh, many Costco's sell dehydrated jackfruit as well as many health food stores. Dehydrated jackfruit, to me, it loses the, the really nice flavor of the jackfruit once they start oxidizing, they start to turn brown, they get really hard and chewy. Definitely not fun. I'm gonna show you guys the best way to store your jackfruit proven by science. And what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a freeze dryer the only freeze dryer I recommend is the Stay Fresh Freeze Dryer. Link down below to my video on the Stay Fresh Freeze Dryer. I'll soon be making videos with my personal Stay Fresh Freeze Dryer that you can buy and use at home to store not only jackfruit, but other foods for up to 25 years as well. If you guys want to get the Stay Fresh Freeze Dryer, link down below uh, to my state, the Stay Fresh Freeze Dryer. You guys could use a coupon code okay raw for a $50 discount and what we're going to need to do is basically fill the jackfruit up on the freeze dryer trays this is the stay fresh freeze dryer tray this is better than other trays guys because it's completely flat it is made out of a piece of stainless steel that is then formed and then welded on the sides so that you have the best contact of uh, while it is freeze drying on the freeze dryer heating plates that basically slowly sublimate out and like pull the water out of the jackfruit as it is frozen and under vacuum. Can you guys see that there's a pattern to how I store my jackfruit? It is always under vacuum, whether I'm storing it 
you know, dry, whether I'm storing it wet, whether I'm freezing it, or whether I'm freeze drying it, it is always done under vacuum, guys. This improves the flavor, improves the quality, improves the nutrition as proven by science. So let's go ahead and pop up a study here that I have. It's entitled, Effects of Drying Method on Physiochemical Quality of Dehydrated Jackfruit Bulbs. So basically what they did in this study is that they used a freeze dryer. They used also a cabinet dryer, which is traditional dehydration like you could, you could do in an Excalibur dehydrator. They also did vacuum drying, which is a new method of drying that in some ways can be better than cabinet drying, but still not as good as freeze drying. So why is freeze dried jackfruit so good? Well, we're gonna go ahead and throw up this chart. Um, it's actually a bar graph from the study showing the total antioxidant capacity of the freeze dried fruit is 220. The cabinet dried is decent at 194, loss of 30 points, but the vacuum drying is 131. So that's basically a 40% less by just using a different drying method. Because it is done under vacuum, you're not losing all the antioxidants because of all the air bombarding the fruit during the drying process. In addition, another very important vitamin I wanna throw up on the screen is the vitamin C. As you guys can see, the vitamin C content when freeze drying is approximately double of the vacuum drying and still approximately double of the cabinet drying this is actually quite impressive. Now the other thing I really love about freeze dried fruits is we're gonna throw up the hardness scale and the moisture scale that the data comes from this very study. And you guys could see the hardness of the cabinet dried or the vacuum dried is very high, meaning it's really hard. So when you have to like crush it between two plates, it takes a lot more force to crush it. Meaning when you put it between your teeth, it's going to take more force on your teeth to chew it up. The next thing is the moisture level. And as you guys can see, compared to freeze drying, the moisture level in both the vacuum drying and the cabinet drying is higher than the freeze dryer. Because there is more moisture and it is harder, it's basically going to be chewy, right? In a freeze dryer, as you guys will see in a minute, the, the jackfruit basically gets like kind of softer and it's easy to crush up literally almost turns into dust as you bite into it it becomes crispy because the moisture content is so low and it's not chewy so these are some big advantages uh, for me for freeze drying and that's why i have adopted freeze drying instead of traditional dehydration for drying my foods at this time i usually always have my freeze dryer running uh, drying different foods and storing it for up to 25 years just in case another pandemic or food shortage situation happens or whether I want to travel and have jackfruit any time of the year the food is shelf stable not even in a refrigerator uh, 25 years so let me show you guys how I'm going to do that so we have a freeze dryer tray here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load this up with the jackfruit. So to store your jackfruit for up to 25 years, first step is to load up the Stay Fresh freeze dryer trays. There are four trays that are exactly this size. You can process up to 18 pounds of food in one freeze dryer batch. You will put the four trays in the freeze dryer and the freeze dryer will take approximately 24 to 32 hours to freeze dry your jackfruit. At that time, there's a moisture meter that goes into the jackfruit to ensure that your food remains raw and done at the lowest temperature. Also, more importantly, the temperature probe will monitor uh, the temperature as well as the fruit so that the freeze dryer will work optimally and work quicker than other freeze dryers. What the freeze dryer is doing under vacuum is that it has a produce frozen and then it puts it under vacuum and slowly heats up the bottom of the tray as the tray is uh, being heated up the food is frozen and there's a vacuum in the chamber water sublimates or comes out of the fruit without destroying or collapsing the cell walls like with dehydration whether that is vacuum assisted dehydration or standard cabinet dehydration as shown in the previous study. 
and that is really the magic of freeze drying so let's go ahead and put this in the freeze dryer and we're going to come back at you when we got the freeze dried result all right due to the magic of the internet we have the freeze dried result you guys saw the fresh fruit going in and now what we have is we have a dried fruit like no other this is freeze dried this is not traditionally dried when you dehydrate something, you basically uh, have a fan and a heating element that just gently blows hot air over it. And what that does, you're blowing air, so you're oxidizing the nutrition, plus you're heating it up, and hopefully not too hot. But because of the processing time can be long, and there's a lot of oxygen being introduced, it can degrade the food. That's why the dehydrated food will get hard and chewy, and the taste will not be there because the nutrition has been lowered, so you're not tasting the flavonoids and the different compounds that are nutritious for us and of course there's less flavor with freeze-dried fruit you're going to keep the most nutrition as as i showed in the study 40 percent more antioxidants uh, compared to vacuum drying and approximately two times as much vitamin c that my, many people are deficient in unfortunately in the u.s um, than the standard drying plus of course this can be stored for significantly longer amounts of time for up to 25 years because there is such a low level of moisture in there plus this food is amazing to taste so we're just going to go ahead and pick up a freeze-dried fruit right here and I want to show you guys what it looks like right the, the fresh fruit was like floppy look at this this I could snap and it like literally crunches now we're going to go ahead and try this you guys hear that? It's crunchy as can be. The flavor is intensified because we removed the water. We're still getting all the fiber. And the cell walls have not been smooshed together. It's literally, this is like a sponge. Think of this as like a sponge. Because it takes the water out of the cell walls, but keeps the cell structure intact, which is completely amazing. To me, freeze-dried jackfruit, it's crunchy, and to me, this reminds you of the same texture of eating fortune cookies when I was a kid. Of course, the freeze-dried jackfruit is the healthy fortune cookie. 100% fruit, nothing added, just the water taken away, and the most nutrition kept. So once this comes out of your freeze jar, you're probably going to want to sit there and eat them all, because I know I did that when I first got my freeze jar. But nowadays, I like to store my freeze-dried food for a rainy day uh, to give to friends or to travel with when I don't have fresh fruit. Or maybe like in the middle of winter time when I don't have fresh jackfruit, I could pop open a bag of my freeze-dried jackfruit and enjoy jackfruit any time of year. That being said, you must store this properly so that you can store it for up to 25 years. So let me show you guys how I do that. I take these mylar bags, very important. I get the seven mil mylar bags. They're a thick bag, thicker than what normal people use. Then I'm gonna open up the bag and first step, very important step is we wanna put an oxygen absorber in there. This will absorb any oxygen that will then oxidize the food during the storage period. We've already got the moisture content so low so that no bacteria will grow in it. But we want to make sure there's the least amount of oxygen in the bag so that oxygen absorber will help. So let's all let's get all this jackfruit in the bag. All right, once I got all the jackfruit in the bag with the oxygen absorber, then I'm going to go ahead and seal the bag. Then once again, I'm going to do the best I can to shake the bag up to get them like single file. That's very important. I don't want a big clump here. I want it evenly distributed all throughout the bag. Then what I'm gonna do is you could buy an expensive vacuum sealer to do this task, but I don't, I'm just a ghetto, I, I guess I use a straw. So then what I do is I basically very carefully open up the bag just a little bit, stick my straw right in there, just insert it past the zipper seal like that much. And then I will go ahead and do the zipper seal around the straw, make sure it's fully zipped. And then I'll basically hold my, hold my fingers on both sides of the straw as I, as I suck with my mouth <laughs> and watch the bag very closely. So 
So as I suck with my mouth, as I'm sucking, 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 I get it, I get all the oxygen out, and then I close that zipper seal, and as you guys can see, I have the poor man's vacuum sealed Mylar bag with the oxygen removed, plus we have the oxygen absorber in there. At this point, I will then put this on my heat sealer and heat seal this shut, and then basically it goes on the shelf for up to 25 years. So any day of the year, I could eat freeze-dried jackfruit or pretty much any other fruit, salad, or vegetable meal that I make in my freeze dryer. Freeze drying is absolutely amazing. If you guys want to get the freeze dryer, I recommend. The only freeze dryer I recommend. It's the Stay Fresh freeze dryer. It's the best unit on the market for many reasons. Links down below to my video so that you guys could learn why I believe it is the best. If you guys want to get the Stay Fresh freeze dryer, you can visit them at the link down below and make sure you guys use coupon code OKRAW to save $50. All right, so that's all I got for you guys today on how to pick a jackfruit, how to open a jackfruit, how to store a jackfruit several different ways, you know, fresh and whole in vacuum sealed mason jars to store it for up to a week, uh, store it in vacuum sealed mason jars underwater for up to 14 days, how to freeze it for a year or more under vacuum, and of course, how to freeze dry your jackfruit to store it for for up to 25 years which is completely insane this has to be the best video on literally the jackfruit eating and storage masterclass so that you can master your jackfruit the reason why i really made this video is because i don't want you to be scared when you or be intimidated because i know it is intimidating for a lot of people to see a big 35 pound fruit or even 25 pound or even 10 pound jackfruit and you're like how am I gonna eat all this right well with this video right you can buy it eat it over the next few weeks store it several different ways so that you have zero wasted zero go bad and you guys get to enjoy the amazing flavor taste and nutrition of one of my favorite fruits in the world the jackfruit so I sincerely hope that you guys enjoyed this episode, enjoyed my download that I hope one day my children get to watch so that they know everything I know about picking, storing, and processing jackfruit the best ways possible. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give this video a big thumbs up. That'll encourage me to make more videos where I go into depth about picking, uh, storing, preserving, and opening other fruits and vegetables because I'm an expert at it after doing it for nearly 30 years now. More importantly, be sure to share this video with other people that have never tried to eat jackfruit because they have also been intimidated when they see these big jackfruits in the store. Now you guys have all the information you need to purchase the best jackfruit and enjoy it yourself. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you miss my new upcoming episodes I've coming out every five to seven days. You never know I'll show up or what new information you'll be learning or learning how you can improve your health through the power of eating more fresh fruits and vegetables and other plant foods processed in the best ways possible to maximize the nutrition and decrease food loss and waste. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to turn past episodes. Past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 800 episodes at this time on this channel dedicated to teach you guys all about eating more fresh fruits and vegetables the best ways possible. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRod.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables, including the jackfruit. They're always the best.